Sir, sir, thank you for permitting me to initiate this discussion on Aadhaar, sir. I think it is a long overdue discussion. And uh, I will start with uh, referring to a recent press interview, sir, by the ex-chairman of UIDI, who referred to all critics of Aadhaar as hand waivers. You, you should have finished in five, 15 minutes, sir. 15 minutes, sir. Oh. Yes. Okay. The discussion should get a little more. So, sir, I, I, I'm making a reference to an interview recently in the media where the former chairman of the UIDI referred to those who were criticizing Aadhaar's as hand waivers and those who were colonized. I will uh, draw the attention of the minister to that interview and I would clarify that neither am I a hand waiver, sir, nor am I a colonizer. My views on Aadhaar have been remarkably consistent since 2010, sir, when I have raised issues relating to Aadhaar's flaws and its weak architecture, and most of those issues are coming true today, sir. Sir, let me start by first acknowledging the sharp difference in the approach of the current government vis-a-vis -vis the UPA government, sir. The UPA government spent thousands of crores on Aadhaar with no debate inside or outside parliament, no legislative backing for it, and most importantly, sir, there was not one word uttered during the UPA on the legal accountability on the authenticity of this biometric database. As a result, sir, thousands of crores of public money were spent on creating a biometric database which conducted very poor verification of identities and did not and still does not have any details of citizenship. The only time Aadhaar was scrutinized, sir, was the Finance Standing Committee on Finance, of which I was a member, and the Standing Committee rightly concluded that this database was going to be ineffective for even for the purposes of directing subsidies and recommended then that it be merged with the National Population Register. Sir, this government inherited this unverified database, and instead of throwing it out and wasting public money, it moved to address its shortcomings. It brought the Aadhaar bill, as the minister mentioned, repositioned as a subsidy delivery platform, and encouraged parliamentary debate. It has developed a strategy to use Aadhaar and other tools to launch a sharp attack on the vexed and cursed problem of leakages, ghost, and fraudulent claimants to public subsidies. It has addressed the issue of lack of verification and fake entries by making UIDI statutorily responsible for verifying the entries through Section 3.3 of the Act. But, sir, this is where the problem starts. And that is why, sir, I'll raise three quick issues. The first issue is the use of Aadhaar as a broader identification in the context of the following. And I draw the Minister's attention to this. The Act was passed in 2016. And before 2016, 100 crore entries were in the Aadhaar database. That does not come under Section 3.3. Who was responsible for verifying these 100 crore entries before it is used as an identity for elections, bank accounts, and for entering airports for the CISF? Please tell me how Aadhaar entries that are very poorly verified between the period of 2010 to 2016 can be used in a plastic cover Forge for 40 rupees in Palika Bazaar and used for access to airports. Please tell me how this same unverified Aadhaar database can be used as a sole KYC for opening bank accounts outside of Jandan Yojana accounts. When there is clear evidence all over of fake Aadhaars before 2016, what safeguards has UIDI taken before Aadhaar is being permitted to be used as an identification beyond delivering subsidies and benefits? Sir, this is a question that will need to be answered either by the minister or some other forum. This question of rampant fake Aadhaar entries is a real one, and it is a direct consequence of the sloppy way this database was built. While the Aadhaar Act was passed in 2016, sir, through Section 3 and through Section 3.3 makes it the responsibility of UIDI to issue Aadhaar numbers only after verification, the minister and the government must know that between 2010 and 2014, there were 60 crore enrollees, and between 2014 and 2016, 40 crores. That means before the Act and before Section 3.3 came into effect, there were 100 crore Aadhaar enrollees in the database. Sir, as far as I know, so the question is, is still relevant, sir. What has the UIDI done since 2016, since the Act was passed, to ensure that Section 3.3 has been complied with for all Aadhaar entries prior to 2016. As far as I know, sir, there has been no disclosure, no audit reports of UIDA or Aadhaar, no prosecution of any enrollment agencies that have created these fakes. So, sir, long and short of it is simple. 
Aadhaar remains to a large extent an unverified database which has crores of biometric with no one to certify if the name or ID against the biometric is correct. This, there is a simple rule for databases, sir. It is only as good as what you put in. Sir, and this is again, I want to draw the attention of the minister. This is compounded by the fact that under the act, all government departments and agencies seeking to use Aadhaar are taking shelter under section 3.3 and section 4.3, creating the perception that UIDI stands guarantee for the authenticity of Aadhaar. So th this is a very important issue, sir, because most departments today are washing their hands off their notifications by taking refuge under section 3.3, saying that the UIDA has verified Aadhaar and therefore they, they can be, if necessary, sir, blissfully unaware or uh, unconcerned about the existence of fake and ghost entries. The so minister is also aware, sir, of fake Aadhaar, including the most recent one of two Pakistani spies being caught with Aadhaar cards and fake names, but with their biometrics. So they had, it was their biometrics, but with a fake name. So what would the minister want us to do when there are future instances of fake IDs in Aadhaar? Should we go to court? Sue whom? If, if this relates, results in a terror attack, would the families of those future victims should approach whom? Should they approach the UIDAI? So there are solutions to this, but to develop these solutions, we need to first accept that these are problems, that there is a large amount of unverified fake entries in the Aadhaar database. So if sections 3.3 and 4.3 are to be truly delivered on by UIDI, the problems of ghosts and fake entries in Aadhaar will need to be squarely addressed through an audit or a cleanup or a gradual re-verification of the database. This is unavoidable, sir, and ignoring it is unacceptable in the interest of the country. Sir, secondly, I'll move to another issue, which is to deliver better public subsidies. There has been a debate about mandatory and non-mandatory. Sir, I think this is a misplaced debate because it really is an issue of exclusion or non-exclusion. And I believe, sir, Aadhaar can be and must be developed into the gateway to deliver subsidies because the poor and the needy are the ones that are suffering from leakages and subsidies. So I personally don't subscribe to the view that there is anything against Aadhaar being made mandatory. But Aadhaar should be made mandatory after ensuring that making it mandatory does not mean exclusion of any poor and needy from subsidies or services that the government provides. So a roadmap to ensuring non-exclusion is important with some predetermined uh, conditions precedent before Aadhaar can be made mandatory. But sir, Many government departments are issuing rules right, left, and center, about, which are being interpreted as being mandatory or non-mandatory. And even I have asked a question in Parliament sir, of the HRD ministry where their answer to the question is contradicting their own notification. So this confusion, in my humble opinion, sir, is being created by regulations of the UIDI, specifically Regulation 12, Enrollment and Update, that seems to encourage a breach of Section 7 of the Act. A lot of the problems around Aadhaar can be placed squarely at the doorstep of UIDAI's vague regulations and lack of clear guidelines on the use of Aadhaar. Proper oversight of UIDI is lacking, sir, and I would urge the minister to create a structure where the UIDI's regulations and guidelines are subject to much more stringent oversight. And I may even suggest, sir, that there may be a parliamentary standing committee on the issue of national identity. So the third issue, sir, is the issue of data integrity and uh, data integrity and the broader issue of privacy. And that, sir, has taken on some form of uh, deb debate and discussion. And as more and more people are becoming aware of Aadhaar and its design and its expansion into new areas, more and more concerns about its designs, operations, and misuse have surfaced. So these are legitimate concerns. And so to call these concerns hand-waving, colonizing and, and to deny it is to live uh, in denial, sir. We must accept that these are natural consequences of digitization of our economy and digit, dig, dig, uh, digitization of the country. Some are legitimate concerns. Many are caused by lack of understanding and lack of communication and transparency by the UIDI. The concerns of a surveillance state are, sir, completely misplaced if the minister and the government can articulate 
clear safety measures that have been put into place to prevent misuse. Surveillance only comes out of misuse of information and data within institutions and government. And sir, we have in this house discussed uh, many, many moons ago, sir, the issue of the leader of the house's call records being leaked. We have discussed in this house many moons ago about call tapping. These are all signs of misuse by people within the system of powers that are given to them. And that is a legitimate concern even in the case of Aadhaar and any of these large databases that the government creates. There was some discussion about this earlier, sir, and my senior colleague, Mr. Chidambaram, tried to raise it, but I don't think he presented it right. This is not an issue of hacking. This is an issue, sir, of the rights of the users whose data is in the database and the reciprocal accountability of those who collect and store and provide access to these data. The Aadhaar Act, sir, and I with great respect, uh, because I participated in the debate and I said it even then, sir, places no accountability on UIDI as an institution. To protect the database and the personal information that users and consumers uh, uh, provide it. While there are section three and chapter six lays the responsibility of verification and protection on the UIDI. Despite such mandatory and substantive provisions laying out the requirement of verification, the Aadhaar Act of the regulations made thereunder remain silent on the liability of the UIDI or its personnel in the case of non-compliance, controversial, or the violation of such provisions. And this is very important, sir. At the, on one hand, if the minister wants to use his database as the gold standard identity for access to sensitive areas, for entering the financial system, if the entity uh, correspondingly is unverified, is fake and fraudulent, who is responsible? And this is a question that the government must answer. This is a legitimate question that needs to be answered. So I, I just want the government uh, and the minister to be aware of this, sir. There are several thousands and thousands of cases of data breaches and misuse, with none being uh, uh, followed through with prosecution. Uh, there, there are a list of Aadhaar card holders. Aadhaar numbers are available for two rupees uh, per entry, sir. Uh, I can give as many as the minister wants. The recent fiasco of the EKYC where many entities accessing Aadhaar were storing and reusing data without permission is also widely known. Sir, there has to be an institutional and legal reform for this. I am not against Aadhaar. I completely support what the government is attempting to do into creating a digital ecosystem to make sure public services and uh, subsidies are delivered better, delivered more effectively. But we must understand the consequences consequences of allowing some of the mistakes that have been put into place in the past uh, to be unaddressed. So, on, a, on the broader issue of privacy, sir, I have heard with great interest some of my earlier colleagues, uh, colleagues earlier speak in Parliament about the issues of uh, privacy. It is both a broader and more important issue that goes beyond Aadhaar. It raises, raises legitimate questions about the role and responsibility of the state or the other agencies that are custodians of our digital footprints at a time of rapid digitization of our lives and economies. The leader of the house also, sir, has himself conceded during the Aadhaar debate that he believes privacy is a fundamental right, even without waiting for the Supreme Court to opine on this issue, on the PIL to which I am also a party. The current provision, sir, I'll just take two more minutes, sir. Uh, the current provision protection to the consumers and the citizens under the both Aadhaar Act and the IT Act is skewed in favor of those who hold the data and places an extraordinary burden on the individual or user to get justice. I would encourage the government to enter this discussion because many are concerned about this. It is better for the government to initiate it, sir, rather than have the court step in. I had similarly urged the UPA government during the Section 66A debate. They ignored me and finally it took a Supreme Court petition to which I was a party to strike down that uh, provision on the, in the law, sir. Sir, as the world's largest democracy and so on, soon perhaps the world's leading di digital democracy, we must take an enlightened and global lead in showing how we can balance our citizens' rights to privacy and our national security consideration. I have heard the minister say there are enough safeguards in the IT and Aadhaar Act. With great respect to him, sir, I, he's wrong. If he, if he believes that, sir, I would uh, gently point out to him that he's in the minority. We need to have a discussion on this, sir, and not take a rigid position. I would urge him to show the confidence and leadership towards this. The people of the country, especially the youth, deserve this, sir. Sir, let me end by saying this, sir. Constant change is a normal, is a normal of the digital world. <coughs> these kinds of debates will help the government and the parliament keep reviewing and adapting to these changes and challenges. I request the government again, sir, 
to consider the views expressed here today carefully. The risks and problems that I've outlined are real and will need to be addressed, preferably by the government. There's a real need to be adaptive and changing, especially in the case of evolving Aadhaar from an unverified biometric database into a robust, reliable, authentic national identity platform. Thank you, sir. Thank Jai. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.